here at Spitland, we ensure the satisfaction of all our customers. And by that I mean satisfaction in the afterlife because all of these NPCs are secretly mass murderers. They will kill your parents, your significant other, and most importantly, your dog. Uh, Curious Simmer? That's not what I'm talking about. What do you mean? This video is titled Unveiling the Dark Secrets of Theme Park Tycoon 2's NPCs. Yeah, it's just an exaggeration to get people to click. No. You will all die, you will all die, you will all die. Before this guy gets me demonetized, let's get started. This is Spitland. It's a nearly decade old theme park that I made when I was in fourth grade. And this is an NPC. Ever since their inception, these NPCs have been both ahead of their time and rather unpredictable. They have different needs that must be accounted for, which are stored as number values in what is called an array. An array is a list of values that are usually related, such as the needs that each NPC has. A script will occasionally use a for loop to check every value in that array. What in the ever living f are you saying? I just want to build a theme park called Summerland. Well, a for loop is a set of code that runs a predetermined amount of times. In this case, it runs once for every value in the array, of which there are five. When a certain value gets low or, or high, I'm, I'm having trouble figuring it out. Should have done your research, buddy. SHUT IT! If you want to save me from my suffering, please hit that subscribe button. One subscribe equals plus one chance that I won't lose my sanity to this guy. When a value gets extreme, such as hunger, the guests will path find to a food stall. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Even someone with no coding knowledge could figure that out. I'M NOT DONE! How this game gets an NPC to walk from one point to another is by using a function called Move2, which is part of the NPC's humanoid. You can think of the humanoid as the control panel of the NPC. When an NPC needs to go somewhere, like a food stall, the game draws a bunch of lines across paths to give the NPC a route to the stall. How the game does this is by using a lot of math. And I mean more than just 4 plus 6. 4 plus 6 obviously equals 10,146,573. The NPC will gather a list of different positions it needs to go to to get to the stall without going off the path. These positions are in, you guessed it, an array. I think I know what's next. These NPCs are robots, and these are charging points that they will stop at to recharge. Uh, uh, these are literally humans! If anything's a charging station, it's the pizza stall! So they are robots. No! What actually happens is the positions are in the order that the NPC will navigate to using the move to function. The NPC goes down each position one by one in another for loop, and then uses a Roblox script signal. <laughs> but not in a way I've ever talked about before. I introduce you to the wait method. For the first time in history, a Roblox script signal isn't triggering a function. It's making the NPC wait until they actually make it to the point so they don't go off the path. It's just grass. You don't understand. It's not just grass, it's sacred. And you're saying I'm crazy. Yeah, I got a little too into it there. Anyways, every stall has an invisible part called Purchase. The position of the part is the final position the NPC goes to. The NPC can take that part to get the stand it belongs to and get everything about it, such as the price, what the stall sells, etc. If the NPC is willing to pay the price for the product, which includes bathroom usage, then that NPC's need will be filled. 